so you'd like to learn some basic Japanese because maybe you're going on vacation there and want to venture off the beaten path without a tour guide. Or maybe you're going on a business trip and hate the idea of being stuck in your hotel while not at work. Whatever the reason, learning uh, the basics of another language is not only practical, but you'll win a lot of points with the locals, leading to higher quality interactions. So why learn Japanese from a Canadian whose first language is English? I mean, Japanese person would know far more than I do, so they'd be more qualified to teach it, right? Well, not so fast. The first thing I learned in my field was, if you're an expert at something, you probably suck at teaching it because it's so intuitive and natural to you that you can't imagine why somebody else wouldn't get it. You'd be ill-prepared to put yourself in their shoes and imagine their position of ignorance. But this is exactly what you need to do. Since I'm still learning the language myself and finding it rather difficult to reach fluency, I get what makes it hard to learn and hard to improve on. So rather than teach confusing, out-of-context grammar and vocabulary, I'm going to approach this from your point of view as someone with no foundation who thinks like an English-speaking person. I'm going to imagine that, like you, I'm taking my maiden voyage to this new land and I'm going to walk you through the various steps involved from the plane ride to the hotel to the restaurants, etc. and give you some material that you'll need to deal with each situation. I'll also tell you what to expect in terms of a response from the Japanese and how to deal with that because let's face it, they could say damn near anything and you will not understand 99% of what they're saying. So we'll go over how to deal with that too. So with that said, let's get started. Um, before we get into the main flow though, there's a few basic fundamentals that you need to know. Uh, because if I try to get into that later on, it'll be immersion breaking and uh, it'll sort of screw up the flow. So for beginners, pronunciation is the most important thing. Because even the simplest phrases will be unintelligible if you don't say them right. Um, first of all, Japanese is a multi-syllable language, just like English, but not like Chinese. The words are diverse and vary in length, making it not too bad to memorize them. Pronunciation may be the hardest part for you at first, but there are a few things working for you. Most importantly, the five same vowels that we have in English only have one sound each in Japanese, which is a huge benefit for beginners. Unlike English, you never have to remember how to say something based on its spelling whether it's on paper or mentally in your head. Every vowel always has exactly the same sound, no exceptions. The letter A is A, as in aha. E is E, as in ketchup. I is E, as in easy. The letter O is O, as in OK. And the letter U is U, as in Rudy. And you need to resist the English temptation to add a W sound to the end of everything, like O. The first half of the sound is all you need, so in the case of O, oh, it would be just be O, oh. short and sweet. Uh, next, like English and also unlike Chinese, you don't need any special tones on the word. You can speak them flat and in a monotone, and they're perfectly well understood. Uh, the next thing you should know is that Japanese use filler words just like we do. We say stuff like ah uh, and like and things like that, and the Japanese also have uh, similar you know, filler words, typically ano or ne or nanda or ja or so desu ne, stuff like that. And on top of that, there's these things called particles, which you don't need to learn about right now, but just be aware that they are words that have no literal translation, like a spoken question mark or something. This makes a sentence sounds like there's more in it than there actually is. In fact, 50% of a sentence could be particles with some filler words on top of that. Uh, the key is to pick up on the stuff that actually has meaning. And the biggest challenge is going to be the backwards way in which sentences are constructed. So in the West, we would say, I went to the store. You've got the subject at the beginning, which is I. you got the verb in the middle, which is went. And the object is at the end, which is store. And if all you said was, I went store, that would be enough to get the idea across. Um, but in Japanese, the last two parts are reversed. That is to say, you would, you would say, I store went. So the verb always goes last. And this is going to screw you up more than anything because it takes time to think of what you want to say in English first and then reverse it for Japanese as opposed to something like, let's say, French or Italian, where the sentences are spoken in the same sequence as the English that's already in your head. So that's why we're going to avoid dwelling too much on the grammar. Uh, that'll just confuse you. And we're just going to go with it. Um, with repeated exposure to this pattern, you'll find it easier to acclimate to it when you're ready to study the grammar. 
Another thing is that Japanese has been Romanized for you, um, which is to say that uh, it's you know uh, spelt using Roman uh, like alphabet characters that you can understand. It's called Romaji, and if you need to look up any vocabulary or anything, it's best to find the Romaji form of the word because then you can simply read it using the English you're familiar with, and it will come out sounding somewhat intelligible as long as you get the gist of this lesson. Consonants all sound the same as English with a few notable exceptions. Uh, for example, R's are like the European rolling R's, except they don't roll. So instead of making uh, an R sound with three or four R sounds, it would just make one. But it sounds like it was going to be a rolling R, if you know what I mean. So for example, uh, just picking a word at random, yo parate. Uh, that, that's how you would say it if it was an Italian word. But if it's a Japanese word, it's just yo parate. So rolling R's typically sound like half of an R and half of a D kind of blended together. So Japanese R's sound like that. And the letter F is another one, uh, also a bit different in the way it sounds. People from the West tend to just say, you know, pure F. So um, they would say Fukushima. But in reality, uh, in Japanese, it's kind of half F and half H. So that would come out more like Fukushima with like a exhaling breath kind of H sound kind of blended in there. And one last note on the vowels is that um, sometimes the uh, vowels are silent, as in so des, which actually has a U on the end of it. Uh, but not always, as in the case of taberu, which also has a U on the end of it. So it's best to be broadly aware of this stuff. You don't have to, uh, you know, inundate your brain with this detail, but just be aware of it in a broad sense so that it's easier for you to understand what's going on when you encounter these examples. So uh, it's the big day of your trip and you wake up and grab a taxi to the airport. You get your boarding pass, you wait two hours to get through security, and you finally park yourself at the gate and wait for boarding. If you live in North America, you're likely in for a double-digit hour duration flight on a 777 or something like that. Uh, the plane will be carrying tourists like yourself and also returning Japanese nationals home. You won't need any Japanese skills in order to survive the plane trip, just a small ass to squeeze into the economy seat and an ample supply of movies to watch. However, if you find this too tedious for you, um, you'll probably find yourself sitting next to a Japanese person anyway, so you may get a rise out of them by throwing some words their way. Uh, perhaps the first thing you might want to say is sumimasen, or excuse me, as you try to climb over them to get to your window seat. Or if they need to inconvenience you to get to their seat, you could stand up, gesture towards the empty, empty seat, and say dozo which is the equivalent of please, except it's kind of like please go ahead or something like that. At this point, a Japanese stewardess may uh, ask you what kind of beverage you want, uh, to which you could say anything like kohi, which is coffee, omizu, which is water, orenji jusu, which is orange juice, biru, which is beer, ocha, which is tea, or gyunyu, which is milk followed by the words onegai shimas, which means if you please, or please do it for me. So to order water, for example, you'd simply say omizu onegai shimas. Later on, she may want to know what meal you want, and you know, beef, chicken, or vegetarian, isn't it always one of these three? Uh, in the same order, you would say gyu, like G-Y-U sound, gyu, or tori, which is like, uh, poultry, or yasai, again followed by onegai shimas. So these ones mean, you know, beef, chicken, or vegetables. So just as an example, tori onegai shimas, chicken please do for me. After you're done making your selection and she prepares to leave, you naturally would say thank you, which is arigato. But don't remember that stupid pop culture BS, you know, Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto, or whatever it is, it's not pronounced like that. Arigato is pronounced arigato, with equal emphasis on all syllables. No need to stress the syllables in the former example. Um, so, as your neighbor is about to eat his meal, you could interrupt him as he raises the fork to his mouth and say, Itadakimasu, which means I receive. And this is a normal thing to say before you dine with someone, particularly if they prepared the food for you. So you'll probably get a good laugh out of the guy as he sprays his noodles all over the emergency procedures pamphlet. Uh, 
uh, speaking of which, how many of us pay attention to that speech they give us at the beginning of the flight anyway? So lacking the powers of observation, you want to ask the stewardess who fed you where to take a leak. The most common traveler's question in the world is, where is the bathroom? And for this, you'd add the same inflections to the sentence as you would in English to make it sound like a question and say, Toire wa doko desu ka? Toire wa doko desu ka? The wa and the ka are those strange particles I spoke about earlier, the latter denoting questions. Uh, this sentence literally translates to toilet as if declaring a topic. Where is? Since this is the first question you're learning, you'll need to know how to deal with the gibberish that enters your ear holes shortly afterwards. Since it's totally beyond the scope of this lesson to anticipate any arbitrary response you might get to any question you might ask, you should assume by default that whatever answer you get will be either visual, where the person will show you something, or point to something, or they'll offer you a verbal response that you're not going to understand. If they offer you the verbal response that you don't understand, you can follow up by saying, Misete kudasai. Misete kudasai. And misete means show, as in show me. And kudasai is part of a trio of thank yous that people commonly use, with uh, onegai shimas and dozo being the other two. But kudasai is more neutral for practical requests of trivial significance. So you can think of the three words as falling on a spectrum of selfishness, with dozo being the most selfless, since you're offering something to somebody else, kudasai being neutral, and onegai shimas meaning meaning you know the selfish one where you're asking somebody humbly to do something of significance for you but back to our question where is the bathroom uh, if the stewardess doesn't make a hand gesture you follow this up with misete kudasai at which point she'll be forced to point or walk you to the door now that you're sufficiently comfortable you pass out on your seat until a moment of turbulence jars you from your slumber eh nanda you hear your neighbor exclaim what the fuck was that but then you both realize that these noises are typical of shoddy planes built by the lowest bidder and you both go back to sleep until the end of the flight. Now that the plane has landed in Narita International Airport, NRT, you get ready to disembark. You arrive at Terminal 1 and go for a nice long walk before arriving at immigration. After getting in the wrong line, you'll be told to go to the other side of the room and line up with the rest of the foreigners. After that, it's time to pick up your luggage. Wait. Where the hell is my luggage? Shit, they lost my luggage. All right, now what? What would you normally do in this situation? Find something that looks like an information desk and ask them where your luggage is, right? Okay, so let's do this in Japanese because you won't necessarily approach the correct desk or person and they may not speak English anyway. So let's approach an info desk and tell them that our lug luggage is lost. First say excuse me, which as you know is sumimasen, you said this before on the plane when inconveniencing someone. Like English, excuse me is fairly flexible and can be used to get someone's attention. They will say, hi, which means yes. But in this context, it's more like, how can I help you? Now you will say, my luggage is lost. Luggage is nimotsu, and lost is nakushimashita. These are big words, so let's break them down a bit. For nimotsu, you have ni, which is pretty easy, mo, which is also easy, and tsu, which is kind of hard to say, but if you think of it as hot soup and then imagine that you're drunk and slurring your words together, you'd be all like, give me some hot soup, you know. Uh, now just isolate the relevant letters and you have tsu, hot soup, tsu. Just practice blending T and S together to get the tsu. Uh, and then you've got nimotsu. As for the other word, nakushimashita, you've got naku, uh, again, pretty easy. The she is just like the female she. Um, then ma, and then shita, which sounds like you were talking like the Three Stooges. You stupid idiot, how did you get stuck like that? Nyak, nyak, nyak. So the last part is just shita. Altogether, it's nakushimashita, nakushimashita. Now get ready for what I said before about how verbs and objects are reversed from English. So instead of saying lost luggage, as in I lost my luggage, we're going to say luggage lost. The complete sentence is nimotsu o nakushimashita. 
after saying this, the person you're speaking to will either say something to the effect of, you've got the wrong guy, you need to talk to so-and-so, or they might start going on about what can be done to get your luggage back, which usually involves asking who you are and what flight you were on and a bunch of other things. Now, to avoid losing the tempo of the conversation and having to start over again, you want to determine which response you will get, even if you don't understand it. So immediately after saying your luggage is lost, you want to ask, is this the right place? Or, koko ga i? Koko ga i? And ask that like a question and gesture with both hands to the desk space in front of you to show them that you're talking about where we are right now. Uh, to which you'll more than likely get a simple answer like, hi, yes, or one of the following, i e, no, uh, chigai mas, it's different, sumimasen, sorry, that's not, that's not right, or sorry, whatever. Um, but whatever response you get, if it's short and it isn't high, it's probably no, or something to the effect of no. So if you get something that sounds like a no, or a facial expression on the person seems to be one of regret, uh, simply repeat your magic phrase of misete kudasai, or show me, and hopefully they will point you somewhere. Then you just need to go there and repeat the process. Once you get a smiling nod from someone and a hi, then move on to the next step, which is to offer your boarding pass and passport so they can trace down your luggage. You'll also want to give them your hotel information because they need to know where to send the luggage once they find it. Offer all these documents at the same time to the person and say dozo or please take this and point at the hotel information in particular and say hotelu des or hotel is. This is the simplest way of saying this is my hotel and they will understand why you're telling them that. After that fun, you move along through customs and to the arrival lobby. It's at this point I highly recommend you get a Suica card, which is your basic mass transit card for the system. Uh, it's a magnetic card, so you just need to bump it near one of the turnstiles of any subway entrance or train station, and it will automatically handle all the payment for you. You can recharge these things at Suica kiosks located just about anywhere. Um, but since you're in NRT Airport, you'll have the unique and exclusive opportunity to get a bundle deal where you pay a single fee for a preloaded Suica card and also get a ride on the NEX or NEX, which is the shuttle system connecting the airport to a number of common destinations like Tokyo. So you need to find the Airport Travel Service Center so you can either look for that yourself or you can harass some random people for fun and practice your Japanese. Proceed to obnoxiously step right in front of a fast-walking person's collision path and say, Sumimasen! Once you've got their attention, ask them where the next desk is. Say, Next no uketsuke wa doko desu ka? Next no uketsuke wa doko desu ka? The thing about Japanese is that even acronyms and English words need to be said in a Japanese way, almost as if you were making fun of the language for them to understand properly. So instead of saying next, say nexu, and then you've got uketsuke, meaning info desk or you know reception desk. And the sentence fragment doko desu ka means where is it? So in essence, you're saying next is info desk, where is it? Or Next no uketsuke wa doko desu ka? And again, with a rising intonation to indicate that it's the question. Uh, can you guess what you need to do if you don't understand the response? That's right, always misete kudasai. Finally, make sure to close with arigato to express thanks. Once you find the desk, you're okay to use English if you want, uh, as they'll speak it there. But if you like, you can open with something like sumimasen. Next to Suica card ga hoshin desu, which means I'd like the next and Suica card. After you're done, make sure to say arigato. They will indicate uh, the train arrival time that you must not be late for. Everything in Japan is very punctual, so don't think you can show up even 10 seconds late or you'll miss your train for sure. You're currently on the first floor, but you need to go to the basement to grab the next, so you might as well head there. Fast forward a bit and now you're on the next, patiently waiting for your arrival in Tokyo in a couple of hours. As you start dozing off, you notice a lady with a cart passing up and down the aisles with refreshments. 
and flag her down and ask her for some apple juice, but you want to know the cost first. Sumimasen, ringo jusu wa ikura desu ka? Are you seeing a pattern here regarding the questions? Where is, how much is, etc. The format is thing or place, followed by wa, followed by a question word of some kind, followed by desu ka? So, ringo jusu wa ikura desu ka? means apple juice, how much is it? Only one word, ikura, differentiates this sentence from a question of where to a question of how much. She'll say the price is, let's say, 160 yen. Now it's gonna take too long to go into a whole chapter about how to count, but the basic idea is that there are no exceptions to remember like there are in English with stupid words like 11 or 13 in Japanese, you count from 1 to 10, and then you say 10 1, 10 2, etc. And then 21, 22, etc. Then 100, 10 1, 100, 10 2, etc. Or 1,100, 10 1, 1,100, 10 2. You get the picture. I'll show you just how easy it is by making you figure out an arbitrary number for yourself. Here's the basic elements 0 to 10 are 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 9, 100 is 100, 1,000 is 1,000, and 10,000 is 1,000. Oh yeah, um, in North America we group digits in threes, so We've got unique words up to a thousand and then we start all over again and we say 10,000, 100,000, etc. before making up a new word called a million. In Japan, the digits are grouped in fours, so you only repeat after 10,000, not after 1,000. Hence the reason why I gave you the word for 10,000 above. So how do you think you would say 16,415? In English, this is 16,400. And 15. But it's even more logical in Japanese since the number of digits dictates how many words there are in the whole thing. So, congratulations if you guessed Ichiman, Rokusen, Yonhyaku, Ju, Go. There are some modifications to certain numbers here and there that you might call exceptions, but even if you don't know them, you'll probably be understood with just these basics. Also, understand that while the currency is called the yen, when you append this word to, after a number, you would just say N without the Y. So if you want to say something like a hundred bucks, you would say Hyakuen, not Hyaku Yen. So back to our story, you ask, Ringo Jusu wa ikura desu ka? And she says, Hyaku Roku Juen, 160 yen. Hyaku Roku Juen. So you dig through your coins and find the three coins that make up that amount, which is a 100 yen coin, a 50 yen coin, and a 10 yen coin, and offer it to her while saying, Dozo. She'll give you your juice and you can say, Arigato, and go back to dozing off while sipping your beverage. Except that you realize you don't have a watch and you want to know the time, just for peace of mind. Um, so as the lady walks away, you bark after her, Ano, chotto which means, um, a little, like, I need a little something else. She'll return and say, hi. Then you can say, nanji desu ka? Nanji desu ka? And she'll tell you the time. Uh, be aware that in Japan, the 24-hour military time convention is more common than you would expect here, uh, but they also use the 12-hour time as well, so you may get either. To avoid another lengthy lecture that you may find troubling to fully assimilate, just pay attention to the first part of her response. The time will be reported by first saying the hour and then the minutes, as you would expect. So if it's 4 p.m., you could expect any of the following responses. Gogo yoji des or afternoon fourth hour is. Yoji des or fourth hour is. Jurokuji des or sixteenth hour is. If it's 4.30, they throw in a han, meaning half, on the end of the time, as in yoji han. Beyond that, they may report the precise time as 4.37 or 
Gogo Yoji San Ju Nana Pun Des. The Pun part just means minutes and you can largely ignore that if you're able to understand the numbers. Since the hours and minutes will always be perforated by the word G, it serves as a break in the sentence that you can audibly hear uh, in order to separate the hours from the minutes and then figure out the time on your own so you don't get muddled. Eventually you arrive at Tokyo and depart your train. From here things are going to get tougher because you're no longer in the safety net of bilingual airport staff. Fortunately all the overhead signage is translated into English. So you need to get to a place called Yotsuya, but Japan's subway system is a rat's nest of colored lines and you don't know what to make of it. So you start looking for a staff member who appears to be available and want to ask him where the train is that will take you to Yotsuya. So you say, Yotsuya Yuki Densha wa dochira desu ka? Yotsuya Yuki Densha wa dochira desu ka? This translates to Yotsuya bound train, which way is it? You can substitute the Yotsuya part for whatever the name is of your destination. If you happen to be getting the hang of listening to Japanese people, you might make out the subway line name in his response, but probably not, so just follow up with misete kudasai, and of course, arigato. He will direct you to the marinochi line. In Japan, the subway lines are differentiated by giving the lines their own name and by drawing them in a different color on the map. Tokyo Station is part of the Marinochi line, which is a red line on the map, and every station is numbered in the order they occur, with the first letter of the line preceding the number. Thus, you're at M17, and you need to get to M12. So you're going backwards in a sense, although the word backwards is arbitrary and just helps determine direction, since, as you can see, very few of the lines go north and south, or east and west. They go all over the place. So it's better to think of forward and backward by using the station numbers. So the staff member walks or points you to the correct platform. You wait for your train and you get on. Inside the train, you will see that uh, the line station map is printed overhead with Eng English translations. There will also be vocalized announcements with English translations. So you should be able to identify where to get off either by carefully listening to the PA system or by counting the number of stops until you get to your destination at M12. Subways tend to be packed, so you'll be using sumimasen a lot uh, when you invariably bump into people. Once you get off at your stop, check the, over the overhead signage for a yellow exit sign and follow it up to the street level. Once you get to the street level, you'll want to find your hotel. You have an address, but it looks all messed up to you. It says 1 Chome 87 Yotsuya Shinjuku City, Tokyo 160-0004, Japan. And this is the English translation. In Japanese, it's reversed and in characters. Either way, though, you'll notice three numbers separated by hyphens. This is what you want. Japan doesn't use street names like we do. They use a sort of spider web mapping system with districts and blocks radiating out from the city center. So the first digit is the largest grouping, or district, um, the one with the funny-looking chome on it. On Google Maps, you'll see these numbers floating around the city center, but Google sucks at cataloging Japanese address information, so you might have to search a while before you find it, and it might not be exactly where you expect it to be. Uh, usually, there's a local map on a billboard at the top of the train station exits, so you might consult those ones as well. In any case, it gives you a rough grid reference to look in. Within this general area, start looking at random buildings within one chome for your address. You'll want to find a building which has the same second number in it, 8 in this case. And once you find that building in one chome with the second digit 8, you found the block. Blocks are small clusters of buildings similar to our own conception of the word block. Um, search each building in that cluster until you locate the last digit, 7, and that's your hotel. If it isn't obvious to you which way to walk to get to your location, you can snag somebody walking by, show them the address, and say, Kono hoteru wa dochira desu ka? Kono hoteru wa dochira desu ka? So, kono hoteru means this hotel, referring to uh, the address that you're showing them. Since you're now talking to strangers instead of trained staff, you might get into a situation where the guy just starts monologuing you in Japanese because you said a word he understood, and therefore he's assuming that he can just have a normal conversation with you. So if this happens, the universal way to indicate that you don't understand 
is to say wakari masen or I don't understand. If you like you can say Nihongo o wakari masen or Japanese don't understand. This will work in any situation where you want to indicate you don't understand what somebody is saying. Nihongo o wakari masen or just wakari masen. You want to get them to point you somewhere, but there's a risk that saying misete kudasai will obligate them to be late for work because they walked you to your hotel. So in the interest of human decency, if they start walking with you, you can merely point with an open palm in the direction that he leads you and ask, kochira desu ka? Or is it this way? If he says hai or e or un or so, all of which are affirmations similar to yes, then say arigato and leave. If not, just start pointing randomly and repeating yourself until he points or affirms your direction. So you manage to zigzag your way through random bystanders with your shitty Japanese until you zero in on your hotel. Once inside, do what you do best and find someone who speaks America. Walk up to the first person you see and ask where the English speaking reception desk is or Ego uketsuke wa doko desu ka? You can also misete kudasai this one, as you're probably only a few feet away. Once there, you can say hello or konnichiwa and check in as you normally would. If there's no English speaker because you chose a shitty hotel, then you can present your passport and every other worldly possession you have on you and just say dozo and hope for the best. When you're done checking in, you can ask where your room is or heya wa doko desu ka? They might have a bellboy or someone to walk you there. At last your nightmare is over and you can pass out on the bed until the following morning. But wait, you need junk food. Don't worry, the Japanese got your plaque coated arteries covered. What you need is a family mart or tamuri mato because nothing evokes feelings of being part of the family like pastries, fried chicken and unidentifiable beverages. Yes, let's go to family mato and then pass out on the bed. Lucky for you, or unlucky if you're the type that craves junk food in the first place, the family mart is only 500 feet away and is clearly marked on Google. So off you go. Once you arrive, you'll think you entered some Disneyland hospital. Everything is bright, white, and clean. Automatic doors and cheery music greet you. The store clerk shouts something at you that you're not sure what to do, but don't worry, he's just welcoming you into the store. How nice. Let's get some fried chicken. So you see the tantalizing meat teasing you from the glass fortress on the counter. You approach the shopkeep and say, Famichiki. No, I'm not shitting you, that's what it's called. Famichiki hitotsu onegaishimash. The shimas part doesn't come out right though because some drool fell from your lips at the end there. The hitotsu means one of them and is a means of counting things when you don't know the correct counter word because everything in the world has a different counter word and they're too hard to memorize. So he hands you the smoldering paper bag of grease and you forgot that you haven't paid the guy yet. He says, ni hyaku juen, meaning 210 yen, right? That's 200 coins and one 10 coin. You manage to pay him with your eyes still glued to the chicken bag with children's doodles on it that looks like it could almost be put in the mailbox and shipped. All jokes aside though, Family Mart is your best friend because number one, they are literally everywhere, and number two, they have literally everything, not just junk food. So if you need something, your best bet is to start at Family Mart. Now that you have the fuel that you need for the 500 foot return journey to bed, you depart for now. The next day you have to go to work, so you get dressed and bolt from your undersized room and down the elevator. As you swiftly walk past the lobby, you shout good morning to the woman behind the desk. Ohio. She responds, Ohio gozaimasu. And off you go to some boring meeting. Fast forward to the end of the day, which is probably a good 12 hours later, and you've been invited by the company manager to have some dinner and drinks with the rest of the office. He asks you what you want to eat, and you say, Meat! Meat! You give him a hearty laugh and says, So da ne? Or is that right? And you all head to the Yakiniku restaurant to eat grilled meat. You and half a dozen Japanese men get seated in a partitioned area around a low table with a grill in the center. 
The company manager formally introduces himself, followed by each of his subordinates in descending order of rank. It's customary to say your company's name first, followed by your last name and then your first name, or omit the first name altogether, since traditionally the group you belong to is more important than your petty individuality. Hence the company and the family you belong to take priority. When it comes to your turn to introduce yourself, you do the same. Hajime mashite. Watashi wa Kellogg's no Smith John Tomoshimas, which means I'm starting. I call myself Kellogg's is John Smith. To break this down a bit more, it's customary but not mandatory to announce that you're about to introduce yourself. Sounds a bit unnecessary, but we're just not used to doing that here in the West. Hajime mashite means I'm starting. Hajime mashite. Then you do the actual introduction. Watashi wa means I. Kellogg's no Smith John means John Smith of Kellogg's, which again is completely reversed from English constructions. And to moshimas means call myself. So altogether, the literal translation is I'm starting. I, Kellogg's is Smith John, call myself. If you just want to say your name and that's it, simply remove the Kellogg's no portion. After saying this, you conclude by saying, Dozo yoroshiku. Dozo, you are already familiar with, um, but in this context, when you combine it with yoroshiku, it means something like, please be kind to me, or take good care of me. Don't worry about the literal translation, this is just a nuanced meaning. So once again, the whole thing is, Hajime mashite. Watashi wa Kellogg's no Smith John Tomoshimas. Dozo yoroshiku. Which more or less means, to begin, I'm John Smith from Kellogg's. Please take care of me. After this, you can give a slight bow. The degree and duration of the bow depends on how subordinate you are to the other person or how humble you're trying to be given the circumstances. As a foreigner, don't read too much into this. The gesture is more than enough. The waitress comes by and takes everyone's order. When she comes to you, since you can't read the menu, you simply decide to point to what you want. But you can use Japanese still to do this. You'll probably want your monologue to go something like this. Uh, to begin, I'd like one of this thing here, and I'd like two of these things over here. Um, ask for something to drink, I'd like this beer over here, please. Thank you. So all of this is pretty easy to say, but let's have a look at the complete translation before breaking it down. So you will say, Mazu kore o itotsu to kore o futatsu onegaishimas. Nomimono wa kono biru onegaishimas. Arigato gozaimas. The to begin part is simply mazu. Then you say you want one of something that you're pointing at. Kore o itotsu. Where kore means this thing here. And Itotsu means one of them. After that, the particle to means and. Then you move on to the second part of your order, which is pretty much the same as the first. Again, you point to what you want and say, Kore o futatsu. The only difference here is the futatsu, which means two of them. Since you'll be changing topics from food to drink, you end the sentence with onegai shimas, meaning please. To say, as for something to drink, you say, nomimono wa, and then this beer over here, please, is, kono biru onegaishimas. Notice the word this is slightly different when it's not just this, but this followed by the actual noun. So saying this referring to some nondescript thing you're pointing at has a different translation than this beer, where you're naming the object that you're referring to. Kono is used when naming the object that you're referring to, um, which is why it's not kore biru, but kono biru. Finally, you can wrap up by saying thank you or arigato gozaimasu. The gozaimasu part puts emphasis on what came before it and is a way of showing politeness, as if saying thank you isn't already polite enough. But this is simply how it works. So once again, to say something like to begin, I'd like one of this thing here and two of this thing over here and ask for something to drink. I'd like this beer over here, please. Thank you. You would say, Mazu 
これを一つとこれを二つお願いします。飲み物はこのビールお願いします。ありがとうございます。If that's too much of a mouthful for you, the ultra simplified shortcut is just to point and say, Kore, 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 and then Arigato. But if you can put a sentence together, you'll impress the shit out of your boss instead of coming across as a peculiar but cute Neanderthal. And that could lead to evolution at work, aka a raise. The food arrives and you're about to dig into your protein, but before you do that, you should say, Itadakimasu, which means I receive. And this is table etiquette before you begin eating with someone. Similarly, when you're done, you should say, Gochi so sama deshita, which is hard to say, but it translates into, it was a feast or something to that effect. So let's try that again. Gochi so sama deshita. Gochi so sama deshita. Gochi so sama deshita. The waitress comes one last time to see if there's anything else anybody wants. Before the boss can open his mouth, though, to ask for the bill, you interrupt him and say, Angioplasty o hitotsu onegaishimasu. You're the only one laughing at your own joke, though, and the translator guy next to you face palms. The boss, who is speechless, puts his two fingers together to make the shape of an X, which is a nonverbal indication that he wants to check, which you can do as well when you're on your own, which it looks like you might be from now on. As you leave the restaurant, you say your goodbyes, since it was just a one day business trip and you won't be seeing these guys anytime soon.、Uh, since this is the case, you, you may say sayonara, which carries the nuance of farewell. But just be aware that this is a stereotypical way of saying goodbye and not very common because usually you aren't saying goodbye for a long time. So if you're going to see the person again in the near future,、uh, just say something like, ja, mata. Which is more like, well then, see you again. It's a bit informal, but all the formal ways of saying goodbye are rather cumbersome for beginners and have specific context to be used in. So, on your way back home, as you leave the train station near your hotel, some dude comes out of nowhere, punches you in the gut, uppercuts your face, and takes your wallet. By the way, this is highly unlikely,、uh, just so you know. But here you are, bleeding in the moonlight, with some guy running away with your 50 bucks that you had earmarked for Fami Chiki. So, since you're in distress and require immediate attention, you would yell, Taskete! Which means help. You know, help, help. A couple of bystanders come to your aid and say stuff like, Ah, d a i j o b u k a Are you okay? d a i j o b u k a Or, Doshita no? What happened? By now, the thief is already gone and you don't care about the 50 bucks, so let's just get you patched up. In times like this,、uh, simple is better because you're probably not firing on all cylinders、uh, to remember complex Japanese. So just say, Isha onegaishimasu, which means doctor please, and they will do the rest. If the first responders want to know what your problem is and nobody speaks English, you'll want to say two things.、Uh, number one, the part of your body, and the second part is, Hurts. Simple enough, right? Head hurts. Stomach hurts. This is enough for them to do the rest. So、uh, just say something like, Atama itai, or Onaka itai, which means head hurts and you know, gut hurts, respectively. And you can point to the body part as you say this. So Atama, again, is head. Onaka, logically, is stomach. And guess which word means hurts? Yeah, it's the itai part. So, after the first responders assess you and it turns out you don't have any serious injuries, they offer to take you to the hospital, but you decline anyway, saying, Kekko des, which is something like, I'm fine the way I am, you know, no thanks. A couple of band aids later, and you're back in your hotel longing for bed. But before you do, you hit the front desk and ask, Nani ka kusuri ga? Arimaska, which means, do you have any kind of drugs?、Uh, and we're not talking recreational drugs here, we're talking more like medicine. You can follow this up with, Atama ga itai, and Onaka ga itai, which may result in her giving you some Tylenol and Pepto Bismol. So, once again, that's, Nani ka kusuri ga arimaska? So, you also decide to ask for another towel so you can wet it and wrap it around your, your throbbing head. So, you say something like, Taweru mo hitotsu onegaishimasu, meaning one more towel, please. Taweru mo hitotsu onegaishimasu. 
She may say something with the word bango in it, referring to the number of your room. So just say bango wa ni san ichi des, which means number 231 is. So once again, that's bango wa ni san ichi des. So number is 231. She says something that probably means she'll have one sent to your room and then you say arigato gozaimasu and you head up to bed. After a decent night's nice sleep, you awake the next morning, pack your bags and realize you still have several hours to burn before you go to the airport. So why not check out a Japanese temple? It'll help the pain from last night subside a little bit anyway. So you pop a Tylenol and walk down to the front desk. Ohayo gozaimasu, you say to the clerk, and she says the same. Then you say, Nanika otera ga shikaku ni arimasu ka? Literal translation, something temple nearby exists, but she'll understand it as, are there any temples nearby? She looks deep in thought, mumbling, e to ne. It's at this point that you notice what appears to be maps behind her, so you take the initiative and say, Chizu ga arimasu ka? or map exists she says ah so desu ne and turns around and grabs one then she grabs a pen and circles a part of the map that you're unfamiliar with you ask her where are we now or ima wa doko and point to the map then she puts an x on the hotel's location with this information you should have what you need to find your way there you say arigato gozaimasu and head out to visit your first Japanese temple. So this ends our simulated visit to Japan for now. There are many things to do and many scenarios you might find yourself in, but many of them share common overlap in terms of what you need from others. As long as you can convey basic intentions, you've reached an important milestone. So let's do a quick review of the content. Here are all the things you learned today. So as far as vowels, you've got the letter A, which sounds like A, as in aha, You've got the letter E, which sounds like E, as in ketchup. Letter I sounds like E, as in easy. The letter O sounds like O, as in OK. And the letter U sounds like U, as in Rudy. And then the numbers from 0 to 10 are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 100 is hyaku, 1000 is sen, and finally 10,000 is man. And then for the vocabulary section we have sumimasen, excuse me, dozo, please accept from me, kohi, coffee, omizu, water, orenji juice, orange juice, biru, beer, ocha, Tea, gyunyu, milk. Onegai shimas, please do for me. Gyu, beef. Literal translation, cow. Tori, chicken. Literal translation, bird. Yasai, vegetables. Arigato, thank you. Itadakimas, I'm grateful for the food. Literal translation. Humbly receive. Toire wa doko desu ka? Where's the bathroom? Literal translation. Toilet, where is? Misete kudasai. Show me, please. Literal translation. Show, please. Hai. Yes. Nimotsu o nakushimashita. My luggage is lost. Literal translation. Luggage lost. Ie. No. Shigaimasu. No, it's different. Literal translation, different. Nexu no uketsuke wa doko desu ka? Where's the info desk for the Nex? Literal translation, Nex is reception desk. Where is? Sumimasen. Nex to suika kado ga hoshin desu. Excuse me, I'd like the Nex and the suika card. Literal translation, excuse me, next and suika card desire is. Sumimasen, ringo jusu wa ikura desu ka? Excuse me, how much for the apple juice? 
literal translation, excuse me, apple juice, how much is? N. Yen. Ano, choto. Uh, I need a little something more from you. Literal translation, uh, a little. Nanji desu ka? What time is it? Literal translation, what hour is? Yotsuya yuki densha wa dochira desu ka? Which way to the Yotsuya bound train? Literal translation, Yotsuya bound train, which way is? Kono hotel wa dochira desu ka? Which way to this hotel? Literal translation, this hotel, which way is? Nihongo o wakarimasen. I don't understand Japanese. Literal translation, Japanese isn't understood. Kochira desu ka? Is it this way? Literal translation, this way is? Ego uketsuke wa doko desu ka? Where's the English reception desk? Literal translation, English reception desk, where is? Konnichiwa, hello. Heya wa doko desu ka? Where's my room? Literal translation, room, where is? Famichiki hitotsu onegaishimasu. One famichiki, please. Literal translation, famichiki, one of them, please do. Ohayo gozaimasu. Good morning. Literal translation, good morning very much. Hajime mashite. Watashi wa Kellogg's no Smith John tomoshimasu. To start off, I'm John Smith of Kellogg's. Literal translation, I begin. I, Kellogg's is Smith John, am called. Dozo yoroshiku. Nice to meet you. Literal translation, please be good to me. Mazu, kore o hitotsu to kore o futatsu onegaishimasu. Nomimono wa kono biru onegaishimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. First, I'd like one of these and two of these, please. As for drinks, this beer, please. Thank you. Literal translation, first, this one of them and this two of them, please do. Drinks, this beer, please do. Thank you very much. Gochiso sama deshita. The food was great. Literal translation. It was a great deal of work. Sayonara. Farewell. Ja, mata. Well then, see you again later. Literal translation. Then, again. Taskete. Help. Isha onegaishimasu. I need a doctor. Literal translation. Doctor, please do. Atama itai. My head hurts. Literal translation. Head hurts. Onaka itai. My gut hurts. Literal translation. Inside hurts. Kekko desu. I'm fine. I don't need anything. Literal translation. Sufficiently is. Nanika kusuri ga arimasu ka? Do you have any medication? Literal translation. Something medicine exists? Bango. Number. Nanika otera ga chikaku ni arimasu ka? Are there any temples nearby? Literal translation. Something temple nearby exists? Chizu ga arimasu ka? Do you have a map? Literal translation. Map exists? Ima wa doko? Where are we now? Literal translation, now, where? I hope you enjoyed this video and got some much needed value from it. Until you become minimally proficient in Japanese, you'll likely be memorizing and repeating these expressions verbatim, which is okay. The important thing is that you start using them over and over and over again. The more you use these common expressions, the better you will sound saying them, the easier you will be able to retrieve them from memory, and the easier it'll be to expand your language skills to new and unfamiliar words and constructions. So please consider supporting my continued efforts to make helpful videos like this, and hopefully I'll see you next time.